Russia-Ukraine Live, Moscow hits barracks of National Guard in Dnipropetrovsk, 10 killed. The Russian war has now stepped into day 93 with a worrying death toll in Ukraine. Moscow claimed that the special operation was begun to stop genocide in East Ukraine. The EC president has accused Russia of weaponizing food supplies as Moscow refused to step back from the Black Sea ports. Meanwhile, pro-Russian authorities in Kherson requested a military base in the area. Zelensky to attend EU's special meeting on Russia from May 30 to 31st, food export on agenda. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky will attend European Union's special meeting on Russia on May 30 and 31st. According to the statement released by the European Council on Friday, it said that President of the European Council Charles Michel has invited Zelensky to deliver a keynote address on the situation in Ukraine. Michel said that Zelensky will join the event via video link at the beginning of the discussion. One of our most pressing concerns is assisting the Ukrainian state, along with our international partners, with its liquidity needs. We will also discuss how best to organize our support for Ukraine's reconstruction, as a major global effort will be required to rebuild the country, according to the statement. Ukraine destroyed 60 Russian invaders and an artillery system. In one day, the armed forces of Ukraine destroyed about 60 Russian invaders and an artillery system in the operational and tactical group, according to report. Otovistok stated that Ukrainian defenders continue to impede the aggressor in the operational and tactical group. As a result, on May 27, the armed forces destroyed were up to 60 soldiers, one BMP, one BBM, and one artillery system. Ukraine's security and defense forces are bolstering countries' defense lines. Ukraine's first deputy interior minister Yevhenia Nin said that Ukraine's security and defense forces are bolstering the country's defense lines, and Ukrainian defenders are keeping a close eye on. In an interview, when asked about possible threats from Belarus, Yenin said Ukrainian law enforcement personnel had brought attention to Alexander Lukashenko's words a few days after his meeting with Russian President Putin concerning the installation of an operational command near the Ukrainian. American and Canadian experts blame Russia for instigating genocide in Ukraine. American and Canadian experts have stated that Russia's activities in Ukraine provide enough evidence that the Russian government is instigating genocide and committing atrocities in order order to exterminate the Ukrainian people, according to C. The legal assessment accuses Russia of violating several articles of the UN Genocide Convention, which was signed by more than 30 distinguished jurists and genocide experts. It also warns of the grave threat of genocide in Ukraine, citing a long list of cases of mass killings of civilians forced deportations and anti-Ukrainian rhetoric by high-ranking Russian officials to back up its six-year-old from Mariupol responded to Boris Johnson's open letter to Ukraine's children. Ilya Kostushevich, six years old who was rescued by volunteers from a blockaded Mariupol, heard an open letter from British Prime Minister Boris Johnson to Ukrainian youngsters and chose to respond to the poignant handwritten message. The child added a Ukrainian flag and a photo of his cat Froja. The boy wrote, Dear Boris Johnson. I want the war to end sooner so that people don't die anymore. I want to play football at home in Mariupol. I would like all the children of the world not to have a war. Greetings to all the children in Britain, thank you for helping us. We will win. I have a cat, Froja. I am sending you the flag of Ukraine that I drew. I hug you tightly. Pentagon claims U.S. is not looking for military intervention to unblock Ukrainian grain exports. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby has claimed that military involvement to unblock Ukrainian grain exports via the Black Sea is not being considered by the U.S. He emphasized that the world is concerned about the food catastrophe caused by Russia's Black Sea blockade of Ukrainian port. Kirby further said that however, President Biden has indicated unequivocally that the U.S. military would not engage in combat in Ukraine. This holds true for the skies over Ukraine and the possible naval battle with Russia.
Germany respects India's stance on the Ukraine issue, says Germany's envoy to India. Germany has invited Prime Minister Narendra Modi to attend the G7 summit in Germany next month as a special guest, and he has accepted, according to Germany's ambassador to India, Walter J. Lindner who stated that said that Germany respects India's perspective on the Russia-Ukraine issue while speaking. He said, in the beginning, there were negotiations in the UN on the adoption of resolutions and there was an expectation that India would condemn the Russian invasion. But I think it has never damaged our relationship because we as Germans but also others in Europe have said, we respect Indian position. Slovakia signs contract for Norwegian natural gas to reduce reliance on Russia. Slovakia has inked a contract with Norway for the supply of Norwegian natural gas, which would cover around 32% of the country's yearly consumption and help the country lessen its reliance on. Minister of Economy Richard Sulik stated that a deal for the supply of Norwegian gas until the end of next year, covering 32% of demand as well as a contract for the delivery of LNG gas, was signed on May 26. According to the minister, the Slovak energy firm has gas transshipment facilities in Croatia, Belgium, Italy, and England, allowing for the monthly pumping and supply of one or two LNG gas tankers to the pipelines. Zelensky dials Italian PM discusses soaring fuel prices and inflation. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Friday, took to the microblogging site and informed that he held a telephonic conversation with Italian Prime Minister Mari. During the conversation, both the leaders discussed lending further military support to the war-ravaged nation, raised the issue of fuel supply. Ways to prevent the food crisis were discussed. We have to unblock ports together, Zelensky said. Ukraine's Air Force shoot down a Russian Su-35 fighter jet in Kherson Oblast. Amid the relentless war, Ukraine's Air Force shoot down a Russian Su-35 fighter jet in Kherson Oblast on Friday. With the latest update, General Staff said the Ukrainian army destroyed a total of 206 Russian aircraft since the special military operation started in February this year. UK Foreign Secretary be ready for a long haul. The UK's top diplomat says countries supporting Ukraine have to be ready for the long haul and there should be no talk of appeasing Russian President Vladimir Putin. Foreign Secretary Liz Truss said after meeting her Czech counterpart in Prague Friday that we need to make sure that Ukraine wins and that Russia withdraws and that we never see this type of Russian aggression again. She said that there should be no talk of ceasefires or appeasing Putin. Zelensky to attend EU's special meeting on Russia on May 30, 31. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will attend European Union's special meeting on Russia on May 30 and 30. According to the statement released by the European Council on Friday, it said President of the European Council, Charles Michel, has invited Zelensky to deliver a keynote address on the situation in U. Michelle said Zelensky will join the event via video link at the beginning of this discussion. Ukraine warns of possible strikes from Belarus. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry warned on Friday of existing threats of Russian missile strikes from Belarusian territory. The spokesman for the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, Colonel Alexandra Motuzian, said that the short-range ballistic missile system Iskander M had been moved to areas in Belarus bordering Ukraine. Motuzian said that, according to Ukrainian intelligence, Russia was preparing up to 1,500 reservists who could be involved in fighting three weeks after completing training in the border. The spokesman also said that Ukrainian forces were countering Russia's attempts to push them out from northwestern and southeastern parts of Lyman. Zelensky accuses Russia of hindering alternative route use for grain export. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has again accused Russia of hindering alternative routes used by the war torn nation to export grain to while speaking at the Indonesian think tank foreign policy community of Indonesia 
The president said he wants to avert the food crisis generated by the ongoing war but added that Russian forces are now attacking the alternative route taken by Ukrainian troops. He said Ukraine has been trying to export food grains to the world market by rail through European ports. We want to prevent the food crisis from unfolding. We are working to shift our exports to new routes as much as possible during the war, and we will supply grain to the world market by rail through European ports, Ukraine form quoted Zelensky as saying during the virtual Ukraine FM Kolova says EU expansion to Balkans and East is Europe's best security guarantee, Dmitry Kolob, Ukraine's foreign minister stated that the accession of new members to the European Union in the south and east of Europe would be the best guarantee of regional stability, according to European Pravda, he stated this during a joint press briefing with Northern Macedonia's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Buyar Osmani. He further added that Northern Macedonia and Ukraine do not consider themselves competitors on the road to the EU referring to the common EU argument that the bloc should first accept Western Balkan countries, which began this process of Russia-backed rebels claim control over Ukraine's Lyman. Russia-backed rebels in eastern Ukraine claim to have taken control of Lyman, a town in the Donetsk region. There has been no confirmation yet from Ukrainian officials. The military of the self-proclaimed Donetsk Republic said on Telegram that rebel forces, supported by the Russian troops, as of Friday have liberated and taken full control of 220 settlements, including Ly Lyman, which had a pre-war population of over 20,000, is a large railway hub in the Donetsk region, north of Slovyansk and Kramatorsk, cities that remain under Ukrainian control. Russian lawmakers call Putin to withdraw forces from Ukraine. As Russia facing heavy losses on the battlefield, Moscow regional lawmakers are now demanding President Vladimir Putin withdraw Russian troops from Ukraine. According to a report by Kyiv Independent, four communist members of the legislature of Primor Ye Krai in Russia's east have called on Putin to end the war in Ukraine. Similar concerns were also raised by Leonid Vashukovich, one of the members, during a meeting on Thursday. He admitted that Russian troops have been suffering heavy losses and failed to achieve military success. Ukraine's President Zelensky criticizes EU disunity on sanctions against Russia. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky on May 26 accused the EU nations of staying divided on approving the sixth round of sanctions against Russia despite holding such power to impose a total oil. Ukraine's leader expressed frustration with EU for holding back the sixth sanctions package saying that the European struggled to reach a consensus on its latest sanctions, funding the brutal war and how many more weeks will the European Union try to agree on the sixth package? Zelensky asked during a late-night address. Russian forces hit barracks of National Guard in Dnipropetrovsk Oblast, 10 killed. The Russian forces hit the barracks of the National Guard in Dnipropetrovsk Oblast with an Iskander ballistic missile, resulting in the killing of 10 soldiers and 35 injured. According to the head of the Territorial Defense Force Center in Dnipro, Hunidy Korbin, the Russian forces fired at least three missiles at Dnipropetrovsk Oblast on Friday. Surprisingly, Earlier the Defense Ministry had ordered that only 20 service people can be stationed in one place. Russian forces shell Lyman and Saridina Buda area with missiles, Gov.Donetsk Oblast Governor Pavlo Kirilenko said that the Russian forces are constantly bombarding the city of Lyman. According to the government, Ukrainian troops have withdrawn to a new line of defense in the Lyman area. Besides, Putin's forces also shelling towards the town of Saridina Buda said Ukraine's operational command north. Russian forces target Ukrainian fields. As several European nations and the Western countries facing unprecedented inflation due to the ongoing Russia Ukraine war, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs shared a photograph highlighting how Russian forces bombard Ukrainian Turkey hands over a list of concerns and expectations to Finland and Sweden. Amid the row over Sweden and Finland joining the NATO military alliance, Turkey, which has been obstructing the membership bid of both Nordic nations, 
has finally handed over a document outlining Ankara's concerns and expectations regarding their According to a report by the Turkish newspaper Sabah, Turkey's foreign minister Mevlut Çavuşoğlu confirmed about the document that Ankara has handed over to the representatives of Finland and Sweden during the tripartite meeting in Turkey's national We have provided the Swedish and Finnish delegations in the talks with a clear concrete document outlining our concerns and expectations regarding their support for terrorism. If they wish to meet our expectations, we will work within the same mechanism, Chavisholu said.